And we're live. Welcome to the Put Work In podcast, podcast, podcast. Hosted by yours truly, Dylan McCullum. Hosted by Dylan McCullum and Peyton Cook. Six hour marathoners. Elite, elite. We're talking about pure performance today. We're going to continue <clears throat> to discuss about our marathon. How that challenge looking right now, man? You're whooping tail, bro. I've decided to take a look. I made a whole short about you right in time. It's going to drop right in time for you to win this month's challenge. So I'm at 60 miles, bro. Let's get it. That's the most you've ever ran. I'm pretty sure that's more than I've ever ran. No, I'm when maxing hit, out. When I hit 51, that was the most I've ever ran. I don't... How do you... All past challenges. Let's see. Bro, I just think what I would do is go to your activities and running and then go by a year and it'll tell you each month. Okay. In well, January, right. I did 50.9. That was the most I ever did yep. before. September of last year. 45 miles. That was the most I ever done. All right, so I'm just going to go back for a year. Last August, 20 miles. 45 in September, 36 in October, 34 in November. Which is actually more than I thought, but now that I know how to count mileage, it's not. December, 30.6. So I like ran twice in December. One of those was a marathon. <laughs> 15 in January, 11 in February, 38 in March, 38 in April. So I was running, I really only prepared for the 10K, it looks like, for like two two months. And 38 miles was good. Then at eight and a half in May, 42 in June. So I'm almost like, when I was in peak marathon training, like just off the bat starting out, I was doing about the same. And then July last, that's this month. I got 53. So I've already, I hit a PR too, bro. I didn't even know it. We PR'd at the same time Look, together in the same run. I hate how on some of those months you would say a number and it would be like 0. 0.2 above where I ended up. <laughs> we, uh. I don't even many, have, I didn't run at all during December. How many miles total for the past year? I got 375.9. 315.3. Yes. Okay. So. I actually revamped my run program, so it's actually going to be a lot higher mileage than I was planning originally. But we'll get to that later. I but think I'm going to do something I'm surprised. Like, different. I'm, I felt like when I got that badge the other day, that 50 mile month, I was like, I don't remember ever getting that. I felt like I did 50 miles twice before, but apparently I've only ever done 45 and then a couple 30s, so... And then I did 38, 38 for double decker prep, 10K prep, which that's pretty good. I guess I was doing more for 10K prep than I was for, which is crazy because I actually had a consistent plan going into double decker 10K prep with my longest mileage. My longest run was eight miles and I was going up a mile every week. So I was, I was doing like five, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those were my long runs respectively. And then like two other runs a week and I hit a huge PR and ended up doing more mileage just with the eight mile long runs than I did doing marathon prep when I was doing 20 mile runs. That's how bad inconsistent I was. Like I, when I say I'm pretty sure I only did the long runs and maybe like a four mile run every week, that's pretty much what I did, which is nowhere near enough. Now looking back, I can see why I did so bad. Like, I just showed up. I'm probably going to revamp mine a little bit. I've decided, like, I'm supposed to be on, like, a four mile this week in terms of, like, my short long runs or my short hard runs. Short long runs. Yeah. Okay. That's new. But, uh. Well, you kind of, I mean, it's our what first. What I'm doing, I've just, I've ran three miles every week rather than going up. I, instead of doing three to three and a half, I just, I've ran three every time. It's not, it's not bad to hold something constant. Because, I mean, if you go up on everything, you're going to be jumping way too much, which yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to end up doing. That's what I'm 
worried about because my my because I'm increasing my long run, you know, each week, obviously, but I also had everything else increasing. I'm just like, you yeah. Know, so. I think like once I hit like an hour on my timed runs, like my timed easy run, I may just kind of top out there. And maybe on like a drawback week or like a drop back week where I drop back my long run, I may mm-hmm. increase my easy run. But right now I have well, everything going up. And think I'm about like, this too. I mean, technically, just going off of what I just said about my last marathon prep, this is going to be the one that I'm actually the most prepared for. So even if we just stuck to what we're doing now, with the one long run and the couple timed runs, smaller runs, and a speed session a week. Like, just doing that, and even, like, we're going to be ready for it, like, physically at least. Like, our our body's going to be able to handle the load. I'm going to be ready mentally, bro. But now, yeah, mentally ready. Me too, I think, maybe. Well, this last run we did the other day, that 10-miler, killed me mentally. Because that 400, 200 pounds, of, I was feeling it, bro. So I love that, like, you felt every bit of it, man. I was having the time of my life. You were, life. like, floating on clouds, <laughs> and I was like, I'm finna die. Not uh, not cardiovascularly or lung-wise, just, like, my legs and ankles were beat up. Which that To me, that just tells me I need to lose some weight. Well, I got Garmin up on my computer over here. So which I, wanna... I knew... I want to see something. What did so, your uh, heart rate end up being? For that 10-miler? Yeah, I'm pulling it up. You going to pull it up? Yeah, I got it right here. You got mine? Yeah. All right, so anyways. Oh, I didn't even zoom out. Huh? It was like 146, I think. Average. It was a good run. Yeah, 146 average, 178. Like my max, I don't even know if it broke 160. 130? Oh. <laughs> but I was like, I was floating. It felt great. So speaking of, I'm weighing 200 pounds. The reason I'm weighing 200 pounds is because I just did a strength cycle at the same time of at least starting the first. Well, I was the first eight to nine weeks. I'm on. I think I'm on week nine. Uh, first nine weeks of my marathon prep interweaved with my last nine weeks of my strength cycle just because I took so long to get my strength cycle started. And at the same time, I wanted to bump my mileage up to a, you know, I didn't want to go crazy. I haven't done really anything long. That 10 mile run was really the first like long run, but I wanted to keep my running at a place to where I just wanted my body to be able to run and squat at the same time instead of going straight from squatting to straight from running because I feel like it would affect me more if my body wasn't used to running. And I would probably, I feel like my strength levels and weight would drop more if I just go from straight putting on mass and just squatting to dropping weight and running, which is One's building up and one's breaking you down. And I feel like I would have an adverse reaction and just like plummet, which another good thing about putting on the weight is I have a lot of room to lose, but Peyton Peyton doesn't have a lot of weight to lose. <laughs> Almost all his weight's going to be muscle. I think. Just because he's so lean. I'm now floating 2%. at 180 and I'm a little upset. 1.8% body fat. I'm, I'm going to make a pizza when we get done here. You going to eat it too? Yep. I mean, I don't know about that. I might eat it. So I have officially, just based on that run, that 10-mile run that was just suffering, and the marathon's in like 12 weeks, just based on that and how my squats felt two days after that long run, I've decided I am going all in on running and I'm going to max out my squat, maybe hit a PR. If I just tie my PR from last year, that's a win. But I'm feeling a lot more confident about my ability to maintain my strength, at least a little bit. Last time, man, it was just all kinds of factors going into it and I lost a lot of squat strength. 
which I really didn't want to do this time. That's why I've decided I wanted to push it right up before. Stupid or not, you know, within the same training block, hopefully I'm going to PR my marathon and my back squat. No. Not in the same day. I've officially <laughs> entered into my first 20 mile week. What was I ran 20 miles last week? I did 18.9. Oh. This I week I'm a, probably going to do like 10. I have, what is it? Crap, I just had it pulled up. I'm at 8.9 right now, and I have a 12 mile to do in a couple of days. So. Well, it kind of. It kind of sets me free to not have to worry about the strength as much. Like just focus on put the running as the priority. Just because I wouldn't, I won't be as worried about the running affecting it. So I can just do whatever and bump my mileage up a lot. Which I'm actually going to go into that later of how I'm going to get my mileage up. Which I was doing stuff and I'm like, man, we're going to be running like hundred mile months if if yeah. I do this. But, I'm really trying to think about how I want to do things because I think once I knock this get this Garmin challenge under my belt, you know, but I, hopefully I get the W this month. I've worked hard you for it. You should, because I don't plan on catching <laughs> up. Uh, and hopefully but Trevor doesn't do something freaking stupid and just... Run a marathon? <laughs> yeah, or two. Yeah, he'd have to run, like, a marathon and a half. But, like... He is man, crazy, it's going to be boring running 12 by myself, man. Get hard. I, I got I to find where to run it. Can I so come... Actually, yeah. Can I park at your house and run it? Yeah, just run six miles out and come back. Uh, it actually worked out perfect. Well, I was feeling like I ran over my mileage, my workouts twice last week. So I did. I was supposed to do a 45, 40-minute 40 run. I did an hour. And then the very next day, I was supposed to do like a set, an eight-miler. And I ran 10 with you. So I think I ended up hitting like, what did I say? I think six extra miles last week. So I was that's probably why why I was feeling it on the squats. Which I'm not qu quitting squatting. I'm just I think I'm just gonna go I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fill it out. I'm gonna go into a maintenance. I'm not gonna phase. cry about it. Maintenance phase. Yeah, main maintaining it's I'm a Dang what I was about to say. Well I anyways a, I had a thought. I, I jumped my mileage so bad that I was like, bro, I got to like deload this week, which actually works out better that I can deload a couple of days, hit a huge squat. And then as soon as I PR my, uh, even, well, I'm saying PR, but I don't, I don't know if I will. I should, because I PR'd all my rep maxes. Uh, I'm going to like just hammer the running for a couple of days. I'm actually going to do my eight mile run this week. So you don't have to worry about me trying to do a 10. I don't know. You're supposed to do a 40 minute run and do 20 extra minutes. See, that's a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm running for time, I'm not looking at the mileage, and it's a, I feel like it's a lot easier because I can just cruise. See, that's something I want to bring up later if I remember. But uh, What's I've up, actually, bro? as far as like my program goes, I think only I know one, but maybe two or three runs is i think it's been only one run where i didn't follow my program that i've made and that was so i've been like the super, runs you didn't do i've been super strict to my runs as far as like when i actually do them uh that's so good and so <laughs> i haven't cheated to get this mileage that i've gotten to finally win a garmin challenge you know he's I've faithful y'all i've been strict he ain't got lazy Dylan that's, why, did, that's why you get a goal and you chase it. Dylan did give me an extra mile one day. Or actually almost two miles. Cause it's it's better to give than receive. So. I like food. I want someone okay. to give me food. See, I did eight weeks of training. Hammered the runs last week. All right, so this is week nine for me. I did it. 30 minute treadmill run easy then i did 20 minutes of moderate the next day so the rest of the week i'm looking at a 30 minute run a 45 minute run and an eight mile run i count my times as just like 10 minute miles which there never are so it always ends up being less so 15 and a half miles if i went at 10 minute pace but i'll probably go it'll probably end up being like 13 miles 
Which I don't know where that'll so, put me. There's a Which, lot of green in there, but that... You hey, bro, see, I put check marks on mine, too. Yeah, I was using the black one, but then I didn't have a black X for the ones I missed. So I just went to green. I wanted to be different from you. Green. Green's mean, bro. Oh, I forgot to put but one right here. Out of my five, four and a half... Oh, I hear an echo. It's you. Out there of a, my four and a half weeks... Of running, I've only missed one Nicole, run. Nicole, Nicole, it was a speed Nicole. run last week. Oh but yeah, I miss those all the time. <laughs> I'm, a, suck. I'm okay with missing a speed run, as long as I'm hitting like my timed run and my long run each week, and either of my fast runs, whether it's my speed interval run or my like three miler, go hard or but go. Don't forget home. about your tempo run and your trail run and your moderate run. Well, I need to hit a trail run. Hit me up. I want to trail some runs. Let's uh, let's trail some runs. How many miles week. do you have in your shoes? I have almost two hundred miles on my shoes. I didn't even realize I had that many on there. I think I checked yesterday and it was like one seventy four or something. Yeah, that's the same as me. I think. Uh, one seventy five now after today. It depends what app I look at. One has more. So from here on, the next four well, weeks. What's up with the hair, man? Like, since I'm. Deprioritizing squats, which gives me a little more extra energy to put in my runs. I'm adding a, a run a week. So I'm going to be doing five days a week for the next four weeks. Hold up. Yeah. So actually including this week. So 9, 10, 11, and 12. So that's five. So what I'm doing is just another short, easy run. Just to add a couple miles. We're going to see how that feels for a couple weeks. If it feels good... I'm going to add more, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is probably, we'll see how that goes. Probably not a good idea, but. So I'm kind of where you're at, you know, uh, not strength wise since you're stronger than me now, but. Uh, what? What? <laughs> say that again. <laughs> say what? I mean, but I did that five, 500 <laughs> again. 495, I guess. I did 495 and 500. I, I did uh, 495. I'm like, I want to do five plates. And then I was mad because I didn't did do 500. <laughs> I hate how close they are. Anyway, um, they should make the forty-six I, pound plates or something. My squat started finally feeling better. I started really light, but they decided to uh, pick a marathon that was way too close. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying to do what I can on squats, but I'm gonna squats. try to I'm gonna squat I'm gonna keep squatting like once a week. But I think the plan is, since my mileage is really starting to go up as far as like, because I have a 12 mile run to do Friday night. So I will be, as far as strength wise goes, be putting focus into bench press and strict pull ups. Upper body. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm still going to be pushing the. Yeah, I which wanna... I'm going to change my programming up on my bench. So just to update everybody, I joined the 300 pound bench club also the three plate club so two different clubs you know but uh yeah, i'm in i'm a member of those clubs he arm squatted 315 which i mean it's different than a bench hey, so it look, really bro, doesn't count i hit the pins and like i was like bro i'm not missing this <laughs> bro did you see that it, was crazy. it wouldn't be a dylan arm squat if it wasn't for the pins bro you're not lying bro i cannot help but hit the pins now i guess I don't know what it is, but anyways, that's, I put on, before I started this strength cycle, which I'm pretty sure I started the bench cycle the same time I did the squats, I, uh, was benching 275, that was my PR, so a couple weeks ago I hit 290, and then I misgrooved it, I think, because I've only done like three workout since then and then i maxed out the other day because i was just like i really don't feel like going five pounds under my pr for five reps when i could just max out and then the back off work which is five sets of five it was supposed to be like at 260 or 265 and i was like i really don't want to do that just because it sucks so much it's basically like a freaking five rep max for five sets because it is i mean i've been PR my five rep max on my five by five every week, technically. So I really didn't want to do that and kind of 
I don't know. If I'm going to start losing weight, it's going to hurt that because it was kind of a really hardcore bench program. It was five singles and then five by five. So it was, it's kind of like an hour long workout. Uh, but it was like intense and it was heavy. So I'm just going to back off and have a little fun with bench and uh, probably follow the TTT progression if they have one. And just kind of what it, what that's going to do is give me, it's going to take the stress off of me worrying about the program and worrying about hitting certain things. I'm going to go in there and do the work, but it's just like a certain stress when you coach yourself and you have a certain expectation and standard versus, you know, you're going in there and you have somebody telling you a program that's a lot easier because they're not trying to get you super strong, super quick. Uh, Cause like I've said before, blog programs are meant for the masses. Not everybody could get strong doing what I did. If Peyton was doing what I did, the program I was doing, but on separate days. And I'm sure it was hard. The ones you do is probably hard, wasn't it? You could, I, I, before I did this, I couldn't have imagined doing it on the same day. And I didn't even know if I'd be able to PR or get any stronger doing it, but I did it. And just probably the sheer fact of how hard it is probably pushed me to get stronger. Let's see what I'm I don't at. know. Hard doesn't necessarily mean good, but anyways, I did I'm taking that mental bench. stress off. Um, I'm, I'm okay. taking that mental stress off and going to kind of go hands off on the upper body, but I'm going to push it like you're, like you're doing. Cause you could definitely get stronger on your upper body. Cause I did last year while marathon training. I mean, as long as you're eating enough. Hey, I just thought of something, man. That's good. Good to know. You were, uh, you were, uh, you were, uh, uh, yeah, it was. Something. You were supposed to do 501 at 270 the other day, right? Supposed Five to. Oh, What's that? On bench. You were supposed to do 5x1 at 270. Yeah, that was like five weeks ago. That was like two. Then we'll look and see. Because I was supposed to well, do 285 I, this week, so that I would put it at least three weeks ago. I did 5x1 at 260 this week. There you go. I'm, I'm getting up there, man. Which I'm going to keep my volume on my chest days. I'm just going to have a little more fun. Got Peyton Franklin. He, bro, bro's in the gym. He came at least one day this week. That count, And he worked out with me. So he didn't talk the whole time. So that I actually count this as being in the gym. He got a gym membership uh, of his own with his name on it. Shout out to Frankie. Bro, that's a massive burp. <laughs> but he's in there and he's going to work out with me. So. I want to work out with you. Come to the morning, bro. We're going to get a freaking pump. I'm quitting my job tonight. Please do. <laughs> it's going to be a little funner. I, I don't know, man. It's something about taking that stress off of... Also, it's, it's just the percentages I was hitting because I was hitting like PRs every week. So it was like 100 plus percent on everything. And I'm like, that's stressful because I don't know if I'm even going to get the first rip. Well, technically, it's not 100% right. anymore. It, okay? Well, it's not so, no more. Well, I mean, like, even prior, because that wasn't your 100%. Yeah, technically. 100%? You never know your 100%. relative, but it also grows constantly. I don't think hardly anybody ever hits their 100. I don't even know True. if my 500 was a max out yesterday. It didn't look like it. <laughs> Talking about I'm back, bro. <laughs> You just ain't did it. Before I left, I just walked out the wrong door. I went the other way. You just ain't did it, bro. So we go, guys. This is me being strong. Look how uh, fast that went. Well, that looks so quick. You always think. I always tell people, man, film yourself because you you always think, man, it's moving like Christmas. But you watch the video and it's like a speed up. I'm gonna see if I can show y'all this. This is 315, boys. Hey, look, Jonathan's there. Obviously. <laughs> Hit the pins. Hey, bro, did you go to the ER after that? No. It was all right. I probably got <laughs> like 325 in me. I'm well, not worried about it right now. Maybe this was like my fastest 500 pool. Bro, it's like, looked like a power clean. So. Uh, let's go back and recap our camping trip 
Did we tell everybody we were going camping? Maybe. We, I went camping for the first time, at least tent camping. I've done that RV stuff. And uh, it was really fun, and uh, we did some some sleep suffering. This was 5.05 early last year. It moved too, bro. I've only that's hit the, over 500 four that's times That's the thing now. too, because you, if you hit 5.05 like that, say your max is like 5.12, but you did 5.05, so you don't have the energy to do 5.12. <laughs> so you never know. This is my all time. No, I'll, I'll do it eventually. There we go. Like, even that one, like, it looked like it moved, but then 535, I couldn't get off the ground almost. You start deadlifting heavy enough, you can only do those heavy lifts so often. So we went camping. It was a great time. Peyton Franklin, uh, we had steaks on the fire. Uh, Peyton Franklin, he was going to stay, was going to bring his sleeping bag, but he decided he wasn't going to stay. So he didn't have a sleeping bag. So the three of us shared two, one point three sleeping bags and two pillows. So I gave Frankie my blanket. And so he used that as a pillow. So we got like three hours of sleep combined. Me and Peyton Cook got up. And then after tossing and turning all night and freezing after sweating... We sweated well, for the first hour and a half. Then we woke up shivering. Well, I did. Like we, we went to sleep half naked, woke up freezing. <laughs> yeah. And then... Maybe I went to sleep half naked. We got up and started the fire. Well, I did too. And then <laughs> uh, Peyton Franklin like steals all of our sleeping bag and blankets and pillows and like snoozes for like two more hours. Bro, I was so exhausted. Oh. That we cooked bacon on the fire, bro. If y'all have never done that, Bro, that Chef was Boyar cook. Bro, that was that was some nice bacon. If it's y'all want to know just how over a fire, bro. If you want to know just how bad that was, so on weekends I have to flip my schedule around. So I took Friday off from work and flipped my schedule for Saturday. Well, I woke up Saturday morning and you know went running with Dilly over here. Went camping, had three hours of sleep. So then I had to spend all day awake. I remember, dude, I was, before I finished what I was talking about, bro, I went to sleep, I, you know, was so daggum tired Sunday, right, after church and stuff. Well, I was supposed to go eat with somebody. So, they, uh, I'm over here, like, asleep at my desk, pretty much. Somebody. Yeah, I get a FaceTime call. <laughs> so I answer it. And they asked me a question, and I thought I opened a Snapchat video. I was waiting for the video to end. They're like, you there? <laughs> you just staring at them. Wow. I was like, you there? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> anyway, so, anyway, three hours of sleep, right? Well, it said, I had I clocked like four hours, but I was awake for like an hour and a half in that four hours. So it was like two and a half, three hours of sleep, really. So then I had to stay up as long as I could to be able to go to sleep and wake up in time for work the next day, but as close as I can to work. So I finally passed out at like two o'clock. I woke up at 11. I went back to sleep. That's how much sleep I got. 14 hours and 43 minutes. That is the longest amount of sleep I've ever gotten. This, bro, I need to quit. <laughs> I was doing, that's rookie numbers, man. I was doing more than that when I was in high school. <laughs> But I was also staying up two, three days too. So for funds, for funsies, not for work. Bro, some days I just be like wanting to stay up. Bro, I remember staying up, playing Call of Duty, going to make some coffee, eating some watermelon, and playing Call of Duty, and doing that for like three days straight. I was so good after three days, bro. Rest in All peace. Right. So, I got some. I got something I want to discuss. All right, so we're, that's too bad we're not on a podcast. We get we're getting we're getting a little over thigh deep in uh in this marathon prep. We about, no, wait, we about waist deep. deep. Yeah, oh. we about waist deep. You say we into it now. We train. Yeah, we're getting in there. We're gonna be we're gonna be chest deep here in a few weeks. 
20 milers in eight weeks. Don't say uh, that. <laughs> Two I'm months, man. <laughs> 20 miles. Uh, <laughs> so, let's kind of discuss what we got planned after we the, the nailed out this marathon prep, man. Because that's mm, all we're doing right now. We just, we focusing on marathon. We're going to do some upper body stuff. And we're going to, we're going to do, bro. we got some different plans. So I'll start after marathon prep. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep some mileage there. I'm going to take like two or three yeah, weeks yeah, off yeah. of running. Like I'm not going to run for like ever. I mean, that's what I've marathon. been doing. <laughs> but, uh, and then I'm going to try to keep a solid, like 10 miles a week going. Just to, yeah. you know, maintain some runs, be able to actually not die on runs. And I think I'm going to just hammer out strength till the re- end of the year. Uh, yeah. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to worry about the open this uh, coming up year. Have you ever worried about it? Uh, I have a couple of times, Once. but uh, screw chalk fit and CrossFit. Uh I'm but a tank fit. <laughs> I want. I want to get. I want to get big and strong. I'm tired eat of some, di- eat, bro. Eat. Dylan done past me. I feel like you know if I just bro stop not eating. I didn't think bro. I'd ever be stronger than you. <laughs> Shut up. But you're still deadlift <laughs> more than me. I mean, I still haven't out squatted you. What's your PR squat? Four forty. Four. Oh my god. <laughs> 441. You got to put, put on 30 pounds in this this cycle that's now over after you squat. Tomorrow, <laughs> I got to like squat 440 tomorrow. I haven't done a I haven't done a heavy single. Like last time I did like a year ago, last time I did a strength cycle, proper strength cycle and PR'd, I was doing heavy singles every 3 weeks. So what up? I, I haven't done I did fives five rep maxes for like weeks and then i did uh two sets of three last week and i'm supposed do to better, do two man, sets of three this week which <sighs> i don't know what i'm gonna do uh how much more weight you got to get on clean to catch up oh uh, probably like 100 pounds <laughs> i haven't put a single pound on my cleans but I did get pretty good on snatch. I got up to 200 on snatch earlier this year. But I haven't snatched. I feel like I haven't snatched in like w- weeks, bro. I was doing like two or three times a week. But whatever. We'll hammer that out after after the marathon, I guess. Bro, once I started this marathon prep, I've all my focus has transitioned into running. So I haven't even been hitting the strength like I should be. I, I hit 185 on strict press today. That's five pounds under my all-time PR. To me, the problem with marathon training is just the huge time commitment i have to I mean, commit if you're like, not doing anything else it's fine but if you're still if you have gym goals which most people that are smart will just quit their gym goals but if you, i i can't bro i have a problem no. bro i just add stuff on i can't take stuff out like i'm legit <laughs> gonna have to like take days off of work to do like that 20 mile run and stuff <laughs> you're not gonna be able to move <laughs> like, we did that 24 mile obstacle course trail run but in a weekend uh like i have to commit you know like two and a half hours friday to uh i may if tell we, my boss like hey i might be late to work <laughs> if we do it right the 20 mile or be feel worse than the marathon itself the schedule will be. I just got to do what peaked. we did Saturday not twice. Tapered. I think Enough. that wouldn't be bad. How long did it take us to run? Two hours and four minutes. So I did two, four tw- hours. Two oh two. Four oh four. If you just doubled it, which it, you you think you could do that, but after a certain distance, your like energy levels just tank. Your body's <laughs> like, I'm not moving anymore, which is why you have to build up. So that's why I wouldn't recommend jumping to a 20 miler <laughs> just yet. Two months probably be okay. Especially if you train. I mean, that's what I it did. is. It's I survived the, the 18 miler slash 20 miler uh, last year. So, and I, I didn't ever run. So, and I survived the marathon barely. So, 
I mean, that was what, just what off. What happened if I trained? Bro? That was just off of pure grit, though. You were just you were dead. You were just like I'm gonna not declare myself dead until I'm done. I don't declare death. Rub C. I it, do not identify as dead. Bro, I was like, they're gonna have to pick me up, bro. <laughs> I cannot quit. I don't quit. <laughs> I'm gonna finish, bro. Anyways, like, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say, but it was gonna be good. Just know that. I had bro, the only really time my heart rate hit 160 on that run was at the end when I was run- finishing off that last mile. Oh, yeah. I keep I'm talking proud of about myself. wanting to get good at running. So, what this is, is my chance to make getting a huge good at jump. Running. This is my chance to make a huge, faster. Run longer. This is my chance to get better at running. So, I think I could definitely do the marathon at 200 pounds while squatting. But I'm probably going to hit six hours again if I do that. So, which the 10 mile run really brought it real reality to me. So I'm like, okay. So let me think about it. Even if I did pace that out, that's four hours and eight minutes for me. 20 miles which would be my 10ks an hour so that's five hours but i would probably not be able to run that fast so it'd probably be like 5 20 5 30 at the fastest today like tomorrow if i ran a marathon i don't want that bro i'm on i'm thinking i'm based in based in my marathon goal based off my 10k and Look. half marathon I'm going into this marathon not worried about what my heart rate's going to be. I worry but about duh, my, you don't worry yeah. about heart race rates in a race. Yeah, I'm worried about like you got to let me finish first, doofus. Why would I let you finish, Ginger? I'm just going to kick you off. Uh, you, you say what you need to say. <laughs> yeah, because like my long runs, you know, my long runs, I'm focusing on maintaining a low heart rate, so I'm running much slower than I'm going to be running during the marathon. But you also got to think, you know, this marathon, you know, I'm not racing. I'm just running a race. If you do your training right, even if you never run a marathon pace, long run, you should be able to PR and go much faster because the long runs are just, those are like workouts. They're helping your aerobic capacity. Your, uh, you're like your your heart rate, uh, your blood, you do the, you do the your oxygen. endurance. Yeah. Your endurance, all that <laughs> in company accompanies that and your time on your feet. And then all the other stuff does that too. Uh, but you're just maxing it out in the long run. But once you taper and the energy of the day and all that, you're going to, you're going to be able to go faster on marathon day. It's going to feel excellent for sure. Just about any race. That's for me, anyway. I'm just better at racing than. I'll just be doing it. You've never had I, a race you had. I seem to be on. efficient, though. You know, I get I run ten k's in five miles, so. Or seven. <laughs> yeah, you still haven't ran that ten k officially, <laughs> so I do it again next year. So after the marathon, I'm probably going to go straight into a squat cycle. <laughs> uh, and like, I don't know. Cause I, it just depends where I'm at. I'm, I think I might max out that week just to see where I'm at. And just for a video, just be like maxing out the week of a marathon. How much strength did I lose? You know? And hopefully it's not like a hundred pounds. So you should max out like the day after the marathon. Yeah, it'd definitely be like 200 pounds. <laughs> but My uh, hands are ate up from pull-ups. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Last time I delayed just like straight up strength program. I was following uh, a different program. <laughs> and uh, I really needed to do something a little more intense. So that's what I ended up doing. But it took me months to decide to do that. So I might incorporate the same thing I'm doing now again after the marathon and run that out but also the open comes up quick and i'm pretty sure i've already put myself out there to try to make an improvement for next year but i don't know i could always change that 
Um, and just keep doing what I'm doing now. Because I, I kind of like what I'm doing now. CrossFit sucks, you know. That's exactly, man. You know I'm not good at all those dang skills. You, have you to know what's better than do. CrossFit? Carrying a cross. I didn't, I didn't know how to say that. CrossFit's last year. So last right, year. CrossFit, we're hybrid athletes it's now. It's better bro. to be strong enough to carry something that weighs as much as a Anybody cross. Anybody at the CrossFit Games is stronger than us. Well, that's, they're, they're, they're the elite. Have you ever met an elite? No, not in person. Exactly. I'm... I, it's you, you were you were creeping up on you were creeping up on advanced and then you were just like nah that's too much I of can't a make to up my mind bro to, <laughs> to care. I want to do I I want to be the skinny guy that squats a lot I don't want to be skinny but I want to be skinny you know what I'm saying I mean you're the best squatter I know in my group of people that I've actually seen squat. You weren't there for my... Oh, yeah, you were there for my 440. I don't even have it on video, so I don't even have proof that I hit it. I just hit it. It's just a crazy day, bro. There was like 20 people in there. Like, I hit 430 with just me and Kobe in the gym, and that was just like a spontaneous, ooh, I feel good, let me go. It's stupid, bro. <laughs> and now what are you squatting? 315? For some reps. <laughs> oh my, my I can't knee. do it for a set of 12 anymore. But I know I tell you what will hurt you, bro. Have you thinking, oh, my knee. Marathon prep. I'm running a marathon. You won't even feel till like two days later. You'll be like, I can't even walk. I will say, I, have, I haven't hurt any other than like during a run. My foot like might hurt or something. Or like the day after a interval speed intervals my calves will be like hey i'm sore i don't like it like i'm probably my legs are probably gonna feel it tomorrow yeah for your two minutes of running you did bro <laughs> i ran for what a minute 20 seconds yeah <laughs> <laughs> called that a workout marathon <laughs> training you get ready for that last 100 meters of the <laughs> yeah. race I'm going to run for... You're going to PR your mile on last mile? Yeah, I got to run 11-minute pace for 25 miles and then just blow out freaking four-minute mile. That would be phenomenal. <laughs> Let's just see this guy. Zero. Where has this guy been? Now, be what, what was my speed on that? I just looked at pace. I want to know what my fastest speed I ran. So I could put it into per, 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 per perspective. Per perspective. I ran nineteen point three miles an hour. Is that That's good? Great. Is that fast? I don't know. Bamboozling quandary it is. <laughs> I'm a. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking four thirty, bro. That's my target. I'll be happy with that. I need to shoot for the moon, bro. All right, whatever I squat tomorrow, that's my marathon goal pace. I think I looked up what a four-hour marathon pace was and was like, nope, that's too fast, and then just added 30 minutes to it, which is it like nine that's a minute a mile. <laughs> pace calculator. Marathon. Well, let's I'm say probably we gonna ran... focus more on speed work after the marathon and try to get that mile time down. They PR on my 5K or something. All right, look, if you ran 11 minute mile, you'd be four 22. hours 48 minutes, which is doable. You mean you gotta think, man? We ran like what was our? It was nine minute miles for the 10K. And we're going to have a lot more preparation for this. I didn't even prepare for the 10K. Yeah, I know. So, nine minute miles for a 10K. So, you got four times that. So, say you drop 30 seconds off <laughs> per mile or four. So, two. 11 minutes, bro. 
Well, let's say like you did eleven fifteen. I'm trying to see what like the lowest pace you can get for a five sub five. Yeah. All right. So eleven. Let me try eleven twenty seven. Ah, uh, it's gonna be eleven twenty six. Eleven twenty six is the slowest average sub pace five you can a have. Dub. That's an hour. And I well, I, I probably won't weigh more then. I can't. I keep wanting to say I weigh more. I think I was like my lightest then, but I don't remember. It might have been like one ninety. Let's see what I was weighing during my last Maranatha. How do I even? I could have just done this the whole freaking time, man. Yep. All right. I think my goal pace is going to be one minute miles. Four minutes, 34 seconds. What's the last year? 2022? 430 seconds. All right. So I was 184 pounds for the marathon last year. So I'm 15 pounds up on that and still in China PR for an hour. So. Basically an impossible task. If I got down back to that, bro, yeah. which I'm, I'm, yeah, it's going to be solid. Let's show y'all. I mean, I took some progress pictures because I'm finna try to lose some weight. 12 weeks really isn't that long a time for me, but like, I don't know if y'all can see it. But I'm a little thick. Look at them quads, bro. I was looking at some pictures from like March, and I was like, bro, my legs are so small. <laughs> I probably thought they were huge then, but man, Your they're legs big. Are small. Now. Have you seen my legs? Oh, yeah. Not really. Look right past them. Look at the back, though. I feel like my back Bam. got a little bigger. <laughs> Bamboozling quandary. <laughs> I'm so white, bro. It blinds the camera. So I'm trying to lose. Might as well lose some weight so I can run this marathon. And then maybe get my squat back up without putting on too much weight. But it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't really care about my weight. I don't know. I care about it. It's just what you say when you, you're big that you don't care about it. Or you're skinny. I feel like I I put on a significant amount of muscle. I feel like... Being able to put 40 pounds on my bench. I don't even feel like I put any work in on my squats yet, and I, they're feeling a lot better. Like three months ago, I didn't think I could even squat 350, so. There's that. Moral of the story, put in the work, guys. It'll it'll all come out in the wash. Don't wash it out. Look, you know, here's, but... the, here's the reason, I think, you need to pursue your strength goals before your marathon goes. It's if because you even are dumb enough to have marathon goals, yeah. come and look at us. I mean, why I'm running a marathon, get, I don't know. The older you get, the harder it is for you to put on the muscle and get stronger. And you could always lose muscle. I mean, at any age. So, which is <laughs> lose weight, which is. Have you ever seen a professional marathon runner? No, because you can't see them. They're too skinny. So what I'm trying to say is you can start marathon running at 40 and be a beast by 45. If you, you know, if you have legit strength goals, start now because there is a curve and if you wait, you might miss it. You know, hey, I have, you can always I have get a stronger plan. than you are, but your potential is, I mean, I wish I would have started lifting weights when I was in high school, because that's when you're just like, you look at a weight and you get stronger. I'm going to present to you an idea. Well, here we are, podcast, put the work. So I was in. confronted at the gym yesterday. Oh my God. I'm leaving or i'm about to go take a little urination and uh before my 50 minute run and this guy that i ran the spartan beast with comes in the gym 
Like, hey, man, if uh, – Wasn't me, was it? No. <laughs> I, hey, uh, if you uh, if you want to next year, man, I can we can train together for the ultra. That's my idea for you, man. Oh, that's who that's who did that. Yeah. Next year, we do an ultra. The Spartan Ultra. Spartan Ultra. Trail run take, an obstacle course. It's gonna take about ten hours, probably. How long is an ultra? Uh, fifty k. So thirty two miles. Okay. Well, I'm. I mean, I'm wanting to do a like a fifty mile trail run. I mean, why did I just say? Don't don't put that on record. Uh, but yeah, I mean, mark we could the, probably mark the do clip, it. Mark the clip. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Getting into this run is run is run is fun, man. I feel like it's more accessible, and there's more people to like. There's more destinations. Like there's more. Like there's a five k in almost every town. There's not a CrossFit competition that I know of anywhere local to us, but there's a five k, and we have like. Like two five Ks and a ten mile race here in our town, and then double decker in Oxford. Tupelo has Tupelo's got a marathon, which is I feel like that'll be boring. Yeah, I mean, but they still got one. <laughs> and like every town, any it, like every town around here does a five K. None of them. I mean, Man, they got a five K coming up. It'd be cool if they had CrossFit competitions, but they don't. Yeah, because, bro, I might actually win one around here. I feel like people, like, that's the thing about running, too. It's because, I don't know, I feel like running is, when there's weightlifting involved, it's about the weight. (laughs) Like, that's the impressive part. When you get to running, it's like, the impressive part is, you know, you got the one part of running where the faster you get, you know, you got the sprinters. you are. The more impressive you are, but you also have the people that well, hey, you I can't get any faster, miles? so I'm just gonna run for three days straight. <laughs> you know, and that's to me that's a that's more of an effort of will, sheer willpower, and grit than it is like natural born talent, which is what intrigues me about CrossFit because for the longest time it was really about who's more willing to suffer and is able to recover more. And now it's more into the elite athlete type stuff, but it's, I feel like, you know, the, the stuff that's more about suffering and you're just sheer willpower and grit and your willingness to like hurt and keep going to me, that's what attracts me because I don't feel like I'm the most talented person that could just walk in there and win an event just because I was born that way. But I don't know. Like Murph, man, it's impressive if you just do Murph. You know, that's like you post it. I did Murph. Like if you actually did Murph, not like if you. Not like Frankie. Yeah, like made something up. <laughs> uh, but y'all do this you actually workout. Did it. That's impressive because Murph freaking hurts no matter how fast you do it. You know, and. The thing about those type of workouts is the fitter you are, the more experienced you are, the more it hurts. Even though you took half the time, you still hurt. It probably hurt worse because you went faster. But, like, there's some stuff, like, I, I have it's an impressive idea. seeing people bench 800 pounds, but, like, I don't, like, nobody I know is getting anywhere close to that. <laughs> Even if they just, you cannot shear a wheel you know, a PR by 100 pounds on the bench press. Okay, I just screwed up, Billy. What did you do? I have a real idea now. So we're, we're like I said, we're way steep in marathon training. Oh, my God. So this is going to help, okay? No. Brandon, Mississippi. No. On August 26th. So one month from today. There's some date that I know that that's... I'm not going to be able to do it. Death by 5K. August 26th. I got something that day. (laughs) Yeah, death by 5K. What is that? You run a 5K every two and a half hours for 24 hours. How many is that in a day? 10. 30 miles? 
Why would I do that? Okay, it derailed my whole training. So well, that'll be a hefty month. That's a month away. I'm not worried yeah. about just getting <laughs> mileage, bro. I won't be able to run for two weeks after. Let's All right, see we can go back said. to whatever you were talking about. I was busy looking up races. I have a 15-mile run that week. I mean, that's close enough. You'll get your 15 in. Yeah. I don't know. Ask me in about three weeks when I've been running every day. All right, we can go back to what we were saying. I don't know what I was saying. I'm just saying, like, the sheer willpower aspect, I feel like that attracts more people because it's not about your natural talents and genetics. It's more about up here and how bad do you want it how bad do you want it and get hard it's more approachable i feel like even though it sucks and it's hard and it makes you feel like more impressive i guess i don't know like i did a marathon man you tell a lot of people that and they're like so impressed with you and but at the same time, you tell them oh, it was six hours. If they know anything about the marathon, they're not that impressed. <laughs> well, they're impressed, but they're like, yeah, man, you did it. Good job. But at the same time, it's a slow time, man. And there's somebody, there's a dude out there doing two-hour marathons. I got to take a second. You leaving, bro? I don't know. What do y'all think out there if you're listening? What? I'm trying to think of the word. What interests you more? Or feels more easy, easily accessible? Lifting weights, like weightlifting, powerlifting, like where it's like a competition. Or running. Obviously, running doesn't require a gym membership. It's super accessible. There's lots of gyms everywhere, so it's pretty accessible for most people. You know, for $40 a month, uh, you could basically get a gym that has anything you need. But uh, running, you don't have to pay anything. I mean, you have to have a good pair of shoes. I just really had to pee. But, I mean, there's a cost to anything you get into. I'm just trying to figure out what it's more attractive to people running. I don't know. I just, the influencers out there, man, they're more, they've moved more into like hybrid athletes instead of just CrossFit because it's sexy. I feel like any, most people can relate to somebody that's running, but not everybody can relate to somebody doing kipping muscle ups. No, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to introduce this topic a little differently. I'm lost. What's more relatable? Watching somebody do CrossFit or watching somebody run a 50 mile trail run? Like they're both kind of boring. Well, it depends on the video. At least watching it. What's more relatable is what I asked. I. You didn't watch depend, the 50 mile depend, trail run I watched. It depends on the person. Obviously, you're not going to watch the whole trail run. It's a 10 minute video. No, it is not. I say, what's more relatable? It depends. Obviously, it's the run. I mean, you're thinking somebody, too deep into it. Why don't you leave again and come back? Not if somebody doesn't like running and they really like CrossFit. The CrossFit's more relatable. Yeah, for somebody that does CrossFit, but I'm talking about. In the popular opinion, in the multiverse Why of influencers on YouTube, now? on the social medias, what hybrid athletes running and lifting weights, like bodybuilding and running, has become that is that's what that's what it, at least starting this year, like it's been building up, but this year. That's like the trend is hybrid is what they what they're naming it. Hybrid athletics, hybrid athletes running and weight weightlifting. And it's more relatable to me than seeing somebody 
<clears throat> because most people you know at the gym, they're just lifting weights, doing bodybuilding. So obviously you can relate to that. And the most people, I feel like most people that pursue fitness are just are just running. Like that's something a lot of like most people do. They're not out there. Most people have never gotten on a rowing machine or an assault bike. That are you know the most people that are doing fitness. If they're doing cardio, they're running. What do you do when you're in high school for cardio? You run. You run the you run the bases or you run you the play uh, video games. You do a, a mile for time or you run the track. You do suicides, which is a lot easier because all you have to I'm do is get I'm glad you added an back. S on the end of that. I got worried for a second. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. It's more accessible, especially when you have a whole team of dudes out there. I mean, you're not going to have 50 assault bikes, but 50 kids can run down and back to the football field. If it's big enough. But running as a sport is way bigger than CrossFit. I, I don't even know where I well, got Well, I mean, that's dumb. I got on this tangent. <laughs> it's easier to me. It's easier because there's less skills. It's less intense. I'd... It's so Why are you it's even on this? That's it's, like nobody's arguing with say, you now. <laughs> I'm arguing with myself, bro. That's like it's easier to go on an easy run and go in there and get a pump than it is for me to go in there and do Murph. The same exercises, bro. Well, yeah, bro. You exactly. just arguing. You're arguing with yourself. You just like I'm just you... telling y'all where I'm at mentally right now. Why I'm not doing CrossFit, <laughs> <laughs> which I probably. Like, we're trying to figure out what I'm going to do after, if I'm going to do the open or not. The benefits from CrossFit are the same benefits from just hybrid athlete training. It depends what you do. Because, like... You're going to get the intensity with CrossFit. As an overall outlook of CrossFit, it's just high intensity. I mean, it's literally just high intensity training. You know, your but Now, the only high intensity part of your mo most of your hybrid athlete it's just going to be your running but yeah, it doesn't have to be high intensity I'm saying, I'm saying you're if you get high intensity it's going to be from your running unless you're just going absolutely ham on the well dumbbell flies or something yeah, it's probably going to be more intense in the gym from an energy system uh standpoint but it's not going to be like that medium range 10 minute time domain type stuff it's going to be like 10 second set versus hour long run but you can get that from crossfit too but not from like main site uh, or mainstream like, i did not enjoy this trip into your head that was weird well you left in the middle of it that was like and came back like you didn't remember because i it took me the whole time you're gone, just to formulate a word that I was trying like, to say. That was like all like we know, because most people aren't going to be attracted to CrossFit, right? This is what I'm saying. Like where I'm going to go after, because I like what I'm doing right now, running and like getting strong. So you got to think of it well, like this, I'm really right? just. Which is why I wanted to do CrossFit in the first place, so I could run fast and squat heavy. But here I am, running fast and squatting heavy without doing CrossFit. So do I even need CrossFit anymore? Look, think of it like this. Do you want to do CrossFit enough just so you can, like, oh, I want to place better in the open and never touch it again? Is your goal in CrossFit bigger than your goals Outside of CrossFit. I don't even know. I can like, my goals for the year. Like, do you even have a goal big enough to worry? Like, cause like, I don't care about the open anymore. You know, I like, I mean, I'll do CrossFit, you know, if like, I feel like it, but like my goals exceed the limitations of just what my CrossFit goal would be. You know, I have strength goals and running goals and all this fun. You're goals more likely and, to be better at, let me just say this. You're more likely to bench 315 and than run. I am to hit quarterfinals. Three and a half hour marathon. Yeah. I mean, just the way, well, if you train for it, you could you see, do anything. I don't. 
I'm going like, to retract my statement that I was going to say. It's like, I, I don't like CrossFit enough to put my focus in the CrossFit after marathon prep just to be like, oh, I want to place better in the open. Because my goal isn't to hit the CrossFit games, you know. So, like, I mean, outside of that, you know, what's the point? Because I'm perfectly fine doing with what well, I'm doing. What do you doing. think you should run that run a marathon if you're not going to win? If you're not going to qualify for Boston? Who needs to qualify for Boston? Everybody has different goals. My goal is to complete exactly. the marathon. So you don't have to do the open and just because you want to go to the CrossFit Games. Well, why would I do the open to begin with? For fun. My only goal would be like, oh, to hit quarterfinals. Why then would like, you run a marathon I, I hit quarterfinals and then be like, oh, well, it's not for fun. I like it. It's <laughs> Running's not fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it's a weird topic. Running, like I love running, but man, I freaking hate running. Yeah, I'm hoping but, we get done with this. I love running. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Last marathon prep, I got right. to a 20 mile run. It was like I'm never running anything over a half marathon again. And here we are, marathon prep. Dang. Got a half marathon next week, man. Come join me for it. We'll see. Ask me the day of. That's when I answer. Uh, Anyways, I don't know what I'm doing after. My original plan is to prep for the Open, but I really want to get my strength back. But if I'm going to... I don't really want to lose my strength, but, you know, marathon, man, it's hard. You have to make sacrifices, and unless you just want to absolutely spend eight hours a day in the gym and consume 7,000 calories every day, you're going to lose some strength. Sounds good to me. Actually, with strength, is there's a there's a there's a, a, a you know a limit to that. You can't just stay in the gym all day. You're going to be working the opposite. You'll no, be what doing I mean, endurance. what I mean is like you know your 20 mile runs, and then you're like, okay, now I got to go work out again you know yeah, like, that ain't happening <laughs> i've officially so, it took me a couple weeks but i've officially just long grand day is just long grand day if i have time to do some pull-ups i'll do some pull-ups get hard oh i've done 150 pull-ups the past couple of days might do no, i can't do any tomorrow but why not you for the pull up i don't know what i'm doing tomorrow i think i'm doing something podcast day but well did we get anything did we even touch on the marathon bro what's your we, goal just to finish it are you just saying that so you don't have a goal and my goal is 4 30 4 30 we put it out there i remember last year trevor had a goal of sub four i think and every time we would get together and run it got more realistic that we were getting nowhere near that I think if I can, because it's going to be a cooler run. What's the 4.30 pace, bro? 11. No, 10.50. Crap, I got rid of my, cal- my calendar. Calculator. Freak, not, uh, forgot to type in calculator. We could definitely. I'm going to write out a plan for whatever you say that goal is. And make it. I'm going to be like, all right, I can run four miles this time. Take this much break. Do it again. 10.17. 10.17. I'm writing it down. That's my goal pace. That's for 10.30. No, what? 4.30. What am I even talking about? <laughs> 4.30 pace. So you probably want to go 10.15. All right, where am I at? 4.30 pace. Basically, you just have to prepare for 10, it to suck. Because 17. running 10.15 for... 26.2 miles is right. definitely going to not feel good. Can you run a 40-minute four-miler? And then yes. take a one-minute break. And then repeat that three more times. So you're going to do that four times. And that'll get you at 20... Wait. Four miles. Times six times. That'll get you at... uh. Uh, 24 miles and then you got two miles to the finish and that 
will be a ma two miles point two. Two point two miles maths. And you could you could run that in sixteen minutes. So that'll get you forty one times six, which would be two hundred and forty six minutes. And then you got sixteen minute to finish, and that's two hundred and sixty two minutes. Which would be ten minute miles. Oh my gosh, dude. Your video got two hundred and forty four views. <laughs> Bro. My biggest video all year. All you had to do was say the bloop bloop pew pew word. Well, I, I was going to your page to share the Game Warden podcast, and I saw that. And they were wanting me to go look. Bro. Like, key word, bro. Just got to put the key word in there. AR-15. And you get views, bro. I'm just going to, we should have named our podcast the AR-15 podcast. So I did a video about my first AR-15. Got 240 view, something views so far within the first couple of days. And, uh, it's just hilarious. But, uh, no, your 40 views is a good video <laughs> for me. So... I mean, I'm not Mr. Beast. Bless me. I think that's a wrap today, bro. Well, unless you want to talk about something else. Uh, I'm going to uh, make a pace. Let that's me share good... this post. And, or this you think link. you could run a, an hour? You'd feel pretty good running an hour 10K. I had to, I had to break it up in my head, like, cause I know how I felt doing a fifty-four minute ten k. I think I could run an hour ten k and be okay. But if you do an hour ten k, that gives you a minute and a half break before you have to keep going, because you have fifteen seconds per mile if you go at a ten minute pace to spare if you want to hit sub five, sub four thirty. They, you could actually uh, get you a pacing thing. There's a thing in the Garmin app that will, it's a pace pro strategy or whatever. You could you could set it up to give you the paces and you could put it on your watch as a workout. And uh, you, the race day comes, you could hit it. My watch doesn't support that. I can do it on the app and set it up, but it won't go to my watch. So... What do most people do? They do negative splits, so they start out really slow and then go faster. I don't even know. I'm hoping Bro, I think by we could hit top around four. I'm hoping by the twenty miler. I can. I'm hoping I can practice my plan on the twenty miler. Would be a good test. Just, of course, run it slower, but test out what my plan is going to be. Make a plan or something. Twenty miles going to be the test, bro. Because then you have the load, and then you're ready to roll. So you could push the twenty miler. Absolutely. Of course, you won't have as much energy because you won't be tapered. Oh, I'm beat up, man. Beat up, bro. I'm, I did like twenty GHDs the other day, and bro, I'm still sore. Did. I lifted 500 yesterday, did 100 pull-ups after it. Carried a boats. Almost tied my PR for strict press today. Decided not to, just hit 185 and did yeah, 50 man. more pull-ups and then some quick intervals. I need to, I need to do a lot of pull-ups too because I think pull I almost, I think my warm-up run was almost longer than my interval run. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to lift heavy weights and have some fun workouts here and there and run oh, fast and long. The reason, the, what attracts me to that 50 mile trail run is just the views, bro. Look up Jeremy Miller and it's going to be like the last race he ran. 
it's like a 12 minute video and it's like beautiful bro it's like a hike it's like you go there to camp i think getting into camp and stuff too is inspiring how are we gonna like camp at the next spartan we do and then like <laughs> what's uh what's our what's our camp for next month i don't know yet it's gonna it's probably gonna like actually be hot next month man if it maybe gets not maybe it than, starts cooling down if, towards if it September. gets any hotter than it has been bro well we had to skip a month <laughs> we're gonna have to sleep in the river or something Get some fishing nets. We'll sleep in fishing nets. In in like in the river. In the so river. Like underwater. Head above water. I'm about to so say like, we might get tangled in the nets and we we, we won't make it out. <laughs> yeah, bro. I know what I gotta do now. I just don't know if I have the strength to do it yet. Four hundred fifty pound squat. Look, if I squat 450, I'll shoot for a 450 marathon. <laughs> I'm going to be lucky to hit 400, bro. <laughs> it's going to feel so heavy. I just got to get up. I need Jonathan there. Where's he at? At church. They haven't heard it. I don't know if we said it when he was on here, but it's like almost every time I PR, Jonathan's spotting me or just watching in the gym. I think I PR twice and it was both on deadlift without him. But other than that, all my bench PRs have been him, except that you did two ninety you were spotting. But my real PR three fifteen, he was spotting. Kane was talking trash, bro, because he's scared I'm gonna catch up on, up to him. He said he's like, like, "Oh wait, he's in marathon prep. I ain't got to worry about that." <laughs> Man, it keeps you fresh if you just do something different every three months. <laughs> I'm just gonna not run the marathon. I'll just go up for emotional support and for vacay. Widow. Yeah. Well, everybody, it's been a heck of a good time, man. I'm telling y'all what, it's been so good. I can't even think about how good it was. Y'all put the work in. Get after it. Say the say the words of wisdom. Peyton, tell the speak Get to hard. the people. Speak Get hard. to the people. Get hard, stay hard. You ain't gotta get hard. Wait. If you stay hard, you ain't gotta get hard. But get hard so you can stay hard. Get harder than you already are. So Y'all get out there. Y'all get after it. I'm sick of you sitting at the house, laying down on your lazy butts. Look. And what what was the lesson that you learned today? Tell them. Oh. <laughs> That's private. <laughs> All right, anyways, guys, we appreciate y'all staying tuned. Don't carry your pee-pee when you poo-poo. Yeah, that's basically it. Well, you can carry it, just be careful. <laughs> So, y'all, go hit up Grateful Apparel. Link in the description. Use my code. Y'all go follow Peyton. He's going to post some skinny pictures on Instagram. Uh, I'll be posting once a week now for marathon so I can see how I can degrade myself every week. Look, stay tuned. We got videos on videos in the vault, unedited, untouched, some not even out of the camera. And look, I may or may not post them in the next week. You don't know when I'm posting them. It doesn't matter. Just go watch them when they go just on. Whenever you put them up, just put AR-15 in the title. It's going to be AR-15 bench press total maximum solution. Look, here's the thing about it. If you bat it, you bat it. You know what I'm saying? Don't doubt it. Look, I don't even know what I was going to say. Look, it don't even matter if I say something. You got to go out there and do the work. You got to do the work, bro. Okay? Yes, Look, sir. We're going to drop these videos right here every Monday. We're trying to put out shorts throughout the week. Like and comment. Share them heifers. Share them. Uh, Fit Aid and Cellucor, if y'all would like, uh, we will take sponsors. We will accept sponsorships. We got 50,000 seconds of footage. So, look. Go ahead. 
every Monday, tune in, hit the bell. Go to my channel, Dill the Young, hit the bell, and you'll know when I upload. It's not going to be consistent. I know. I already know when you upload because you send the link out to I'm three different groups. I'm going to post two times I'm a week. <laughs> Some weeks I'm going to post one. And we're going to have shorts on the Put Work In podcast. And they're going to be funny or they're going to be inspirational or educational. Look, go get after it. Get and hard. we'll see y'all next time. Get hard, stay hard, heifer.